the government's new star rating system is up and running. So how does it work? Take it away, government-funded information campaign. Next time you're out shopping, be sure to look for the health star rating on the front of packaged foods. The more stars you see, the healthier. Simple. Hang on. If the system's so simple, why does it give one and a half stars to this plain yoghurt and four stars to this brick of Milo? Mmm. -hmm. Fine, I'll do it myself. The health star rating is a score out of five on the front of packaged goods. Simple. Until you try to understand how the f*** they worked it out. First, the product gets a baseline score related to the less healthy ingredients it has, like saturated fat, sodium and sugar although it ignores things like preservatives. Then it factors in a limited list of positive nutrients, a bit like how a review of Les Mis would consider the wholesome goodness of Hugh Jackman and deduct points for Russell Crowe. So Ham is high in saturated fat. Finally, products are given a star rating based on how their health score ranks within their food categories. These food categories. Dairy beverages, cheese and processed cheese, other dairy products, non-dairy beverages, oils and spreads, everything else. Oh, by the way, that last category is big. About 85% of products displaying star ratings fall into it. These categories are important because the star rating system is only designed to compare similar products. So if you're comparing cereals, you can tell that this five-star all brand is healthier than this two-star Fruit Loops. Oh, come on. It says fruit in the name. Yeah, if you can't spell. But if you're looking for a snack, it doesn't tell you that these two-and-a-half-star cheese-flavoured shapes are healthier than this two-star actual cheese because these products are in different categories. Better have them both, just to be safe. Also, the star rating system is only based on 100 grams of a product, so you can only really compare these rice bubbles to this Milo bar if you're having the same amount of them. Yeah, I'm just having one packet of each. Supporters of the Health Star system hoped it would encourage companies to make their food healthier, and there have been some early positive signs. Despite years of marketing themselves as Iron Mad food, initially, Nutrigain only got two stars, possibly because a full third of it was sugar. So Nutrigrain switched to a new recipe that had 17% less sugar and 25% less sodium. So now, instead of one in three spoonfuls being sugar, it's a responsible, definitely healthy one in four. I can finally fit in my surf ski. Only around 4,000 products currently have the Health Star ratings, and it's a voluntary system, so companies can choose just not to display them. If you want to compare products that don't have Health Star ratings, you can do it the old way. I'm comparing them right now. By looking at the nutritional information on the back. Or the new way, by using the Food Switch app which lets you scan a barcode and then shows you the star rating of products that don't necessarily want you to see them. Food Switch currently lists more than 63,000 products, with more added all the time. Hey, look, everyone's doing it. Food apps, hey? The app even suggests healthier alternatives than the low star products, which is how you're supposed to use the star system. So next time you're out shopping, remember, the system behind the health star rating may not be that simple, but using it can be. If you pick up a product with a low health star rating, look for a similar product with more stars. A four star cheese is going to be more healthy than a two star cheese. Although you can't compare your cheese and your Cheetos, because not all stars are created equal. So binging on five star products isn't necessarily the healthiest option. I'll take all your five star lard, thanks. But in general, more stars are better. Except in this case. First star.